Mining is the first step of the steelmaking process, as many of the raw materials like iron ore, limestone, and coal are minerals found in the Earth's crust. These raw materials are obtained by underground shaft mining or at ground level by open pit mining. After extraction, they are assessed for purity and type and distributed for various uses. Most will need further refinement prior to using them for the iron making process. Coal is extracted from the Earth's crust either underground by shaft mining or at ground level by open pit mining. It is used as fuel in blast furnaces in the form of metallurgical coke. Metallurgical coke is produced by igniting coal in specially designed coking ovens that consist of a connected set of smaller ovens. The coal is crushed and blended, then inserted into the ovens. Next, it is heated to 1800 degrees Fahrenheit for approximately 18 hours. The heat generated by the ovens removes the volatile compounds and other impurities naturally found in the coal. And a pure carbon form called metallurgical coke remains. When this coke is exposed to oxygen, it will immediately ignite and begin to burn. To prevent this, the coke must be quickly quenched to stop the burning process. The cooled coke is then dumped onto a coal wharf where it is taken to a facility to be screened and sized prior to being loaded into the blast furnace. In steel making, lime is an extremely reactive material added to create slag. Slag is a crucial element of steel making and iron making that absorbs impurities found in the metal. Limestone is heated in a rotary kiln to create what is called burnt lime. The burner heats the limestone to remove the carbon and some of the oxygen. Upon exiting the kiln, the burnt lime is cooled, screened, and sized. A blast furnace reduces iron ore into melted iron, which is the chief ingredient in steel. Air is heated to very high temperatures in the blast stove and then blown into the blast furnace. The blast furnace houses a continuous process where layers of metallurgical coke, iron ore, and what's known as burnt lime are charged through the top of the blast furnace. As the ingredients travel through the furnace, chemical reactions take place, removing the oxygen and leaving melted elemental iron and slag. Periodically, the bottom of the furnace is opened to allow molten iron to flow to a torpedo car or ladle for transportation to steel making facilities. At the same time, slag formed on top of the molten iron is directed to a slag pot. The basic oxygen furnace process is a method of steel making in which hot metal or pig iron is made into steel. In this process, either hot metal or pig iron, steel scrap, and flux or burnt lime is charged into a furnace called a converter or vessel. Next, oxygen is blown into the mixture using a water-cooled metal tube called a lance. Once the carbon level has been reduced in the steel, the lance is removed and the vessel is emptied by rotating it to pour the refined steel into a ladle. The vessel is rotated in the opposite direction to pour out and discard the slag along with the impurities it absorbed. To start the electric arc furnace process, recycled steel scrap or other iron-rich raw materials are charged into the furnace along with slag-forming materials. Next, three large graphite electrodes send high-powered electric arcs through the scrap, generating temperatures up to 3000 degrees Fahrenheit. At this temperature, the iron-rich raw materials melt into liquid steel and a protective slag layer is formed. Once the steel has been completely melted, it is tapped into a ladle for further processing, and the excess slag is poured off in preparation for the next heat. EAFs are very popular when building new steel facilities because of their small size, lower cost, and reduced environmental impact. Argon Oxygen Decarburization, or AOD, is a process used in the production of stainless steel or other high-grade steel alloys. 
After initial melting in the primary steelmaking process, the metal is transferred to an AOD vessel where it will be subjected to three refining steps, decarburization, reduction, and desulfurization. In the decarburization step, carbon is removed via chemical reaction. By controlling the ratio of oxygen and inert gas, the carbon is removed without removing the oxidizable alloying elements. The reduction step recovers oxidized elements absorbed in the slag and returns them to the molten steel. In the desulfurization step, lime is added to dilute and reduce the sulfur content in the metal bath. Upon completion of the three steps, the metal is then poured into a steel ladle for further refinement. A ladle metallurgical furnace, or LMF, is used to refine molten steel while remaining in the ladle. The LMF uses three graphite electrodes to heat the liquid steel, which is stirred by bubbling an inert gas, such as argon, up from the bottom of the ladle. A slag layer is formed to protect the liquid steel and remove inclusions and impurities. Steel chemistry can be further modified by adding calcium, aluminum, or other ferroalloys as needed. A refining station is used to refine molten steel while it remains in the ladle. This relieves the primary steel making processes of most secondary refining operations. The refining station uses chemical reactions and external burners to heat the liquid steel, which is stirred by bubbling an inert gas, such as argon, up from the bottom of the ladle. A slag layer is formed to protect the liquid steel and remove inclusions and impurities. Steel chemistry can be further modified by adding calcium, aluminum, or other ferroalloys as needed. When liquid steel is produced, it often has dissolved gases, too much carbon and too much oxygen. While these gases and elements can be removed from the liquid steel under regular atmospheric conditions, vacuum degassing removes these harmful elements much quicker by creating an environment with low atmospheric pressure. Billets, blooms, and near-net shapes are semi-finished products produced by the continuous casting process. They are used in the production of a variety of finished steel products. The casting process begins with a ladle full of molten steel suspended over a tun dish. The steel in the tun dish flows into several continuous casting molds. As the steel exits the molds, water sprays further solidify the steel within the strands. Finally, the solidified strands are cut into individual pieces, which are small enough to be transported easily to the next stages of production. Ingot molds are filled with liquid steel from the bottom of the molds to the top to limit the exposure of the steel to the atmosphere, which ensures the steel quality. Once solidified, the ingots are removed from the molds and reheated for the forging process. Slab casting begins with liquid steel hanging over a tun dish. The liquid flows to nozzles suspended over a continuous casting mold. As the steel flows into the mold, the mold oscillates to push the liquid steel down. While traveling through the mold, the surface of the strand solidifies, but the inside of the strand is still molten. In the spray chamber, water cools and further solidifies the steel. Eventually, the solidified strand is bent from vertical to horizontal and cut by gas torches into individual slabs. Cast strip is the product produced by the continuous cast rolling process, also known as a strip caster. The strip casting process begins with a ladle full of liquid steel suspended over a tun dish. The molten steel in the tun dish flows to the nozzle which is suspended over an additional reservoir called a bathtub. From the bathtub, the molten steel flows between the counter-rotating, water-cooled drums or rolls, which solidifies the steel directly into a coil. Eventually, the solidified cast strip is bent from vertical to horizontal, where it goes through a descaler to remove any oxide surface scale and rolling stands to hot roll the strip to its required thickness. Finally, the hot rolled coil is cooled by water sprays, sheared to individual coil lengths, and coiled at the coiling stand at the end. Slab casting begins with liquid steel hanging over a tun dish. The liquid flows to nozzles suspended over a continuous casting mold. While traveling through the mold, the surface of the strand solidifies, 
but the inside of the strand is still molten. In the spray chamber, water cools and further solidifies the steel. Eventually, the solidified strand is bent from vertical to horizontal and then cut by a shear system into individual slabs. Most thin slab casters include rolling stands to hot roll the slab into a hot rolled coil. The coil is cooled by water sprays, then coiled by the coiling stand at the end of the line. The hot rolling process begins with a continuous cast slab exiting the reheat furnace. The material is descaled with high pressure water before entering the roughing and finishing mill sections to reach the final thickness. The hot rolled coil is then cooled via water sprays, rolled up into a coil, packaged, and shipped. During the pickling process, a coil is unwound and submerged in pickling tanks containing a strong acid solution. Several tanks are used to ensure the steel is fully descaled and cleaned. After going through the acid tanks, the coil is rinsed with water to remove any residual acid. Next, the coil is dried using high pressure hot air to remove any residual water. Finally, a thin coating of rust preventative oil is applied as a protective barrier. Starting with a pickled and oiled hot rolled coil, the cold rolling process unrolls the metal coil and passes it between a set of work rolls, where the compressive force of the rolls reduces the thickness of the metal. This process is done at room temperature, which is why it is referred to as cold rolling. Annealing Annealing is a heat treatment that alters the metal's microstructure to increase its ductility and make it more workable. The furnace heats the metal items above their recrystallization temperature, which allows them to soften or temper by relieving their microstructures of the internal stresses created during prior cold working processes. Temper rolling is used to reduce the thickness of metal. Temper rolling is done on a temper mill, which is composed of an entry end uncoiler. a cold rolling mill stand, advanced metal thickness control equipment, oiling equipment, and an exit end recoiler. Tin plate has the strength and formability of steel combined with the non-corrosive and non-toxic properties of tin. It is largely used for containers for food and beverages. When tin coating is applied to a steel coil using the electroplating process, the steel is coated using a high electrical potential between the steel and a dissolvable tin electrode. Galvanized steel is extensively used for applications requiring the strength of steel combined with the corrosion resistance of zinc. A coil of steel enters the hot dip galvanizing line and is connected to the tail end of the previous coil, enabling the machine to feed the annealing furnace and zinc pot without interruptions. The strip is cleaned and dried prior to being heated and put in a molten zinc bath. Air knives control the thickness of the coating by blowing high pressure air. Rod is a hot rolled round steel bar. It is thicker than materials designed as wire. Hot rolling of steel rod begins by heating blooms or billets in a reheat furnace. The reheated steel is cleaned using a descaler and rolled to its final size. Then the rod is cut to the desired length and allowed to cool to ambient temperature. Wire rods are produced in a hot roll process. Coiled wire rod is typically produced via a laying head process. Steel wire is produced using a drawing process. Where the coiled wire rod's cross section is reduced by pulling it through drawing dies. Hot rolled bar begins by heating blooms or billets in a reheat furnace. The reheated steel is cleaned using a descaler and rolled to its final size and shape through a series of rolling passes.
The seamless pipe process begins by reheating a tube round. After reheating, the tube round is descaled using high pressure water to remove any iron oxide surface scale. Then, it enters the piercing mill where a pair of rotating wheels forces the tube round to rotate and drive against a counter-rotating piercing head. The piercing head pushes a hole through the entire length of the tube round, producing a seamless tube or pipe. After piercing, the tube is processed through a series of rolling mills where the pipe is finished to its prescribed dimensions. Seamless pipes are widely used in situations where a seam or weld in the pipe's circumference is considered a weak point. Forgings are steel blanks shaped by a hydraulic press from a solid ingot cast block. A manipulator extracts the ingot from the reheat furnace and places it between the dies of the forge press. After forging, the piece might require additional processing to meet the customer's specifications. Plates are produced in a variety of steel grades and properties for a wide variety of applications. The plate rolling process begins with a slab or bloom exiting the reheat furnace. Next, the material is descaled, which is where the iron oxide surface scale is removed with high pressure water to ensure a clean surface. The hot slab or bloom then enters the roughing mill to begin reducing the slab's thickness. As the slab is reduced in thickness, its length increases as its as casted microstructure breaks down. A steckel mill maintains the material's temperature by installing heated coil boxes on either side of the rolling mill stand. Next, the plate is cooled via water sprays, after which a shear will crop the plate into the appropriate lengths before it exits the process to a cooling bed.